Definitely no slouches. As we get to picks and bands, we'll find out what they decide to build their compositions out with Cinder off the board, followed by Rakan for Fnatic and Kalista on so Kong Attitude. Big picks that I'm really looking for are going to be the Rise. I know Caps has really only gotten, gotten his hands on it once. Normally, it is banned in the second rotation, but as I said, it, like, nope, get it out of here right out of the gate. Yeah, Caps has definitely been able to pull off some pretty nasty things on that. In fact, even when he joined the LCS, he had this insane backdoor play up against G2 Esports that everyone in the EU LCS remembers. Not going to get a chance to play off any of that shenanigans today. And I expect it to be a permanently banned champion from HKA, whether they're on red or blue side, simply because Mission doesn't play it. It's not a champion that's in his wheelhouse. Uh, he does have a wider champion pool. He's more likely to go towards like the Cassidans and the Jaces, but Ryze just isn't there. So if Ryze is coming back into power and if he really feels threatened by Caps, this could be a pinch point where Fnatic can lock them down in draft and get a better favorable matchup because HKA are forced to ban this. Mm -hmm. For Mission, we haven't actually seen him pull a whole lot of variety out just yet throughout their five games. He's played Cinder in four of them, so maybe we'll see things a little differently with that Cinder band away. Starting off, we get a Gragas first pick for Fnatic. And that's simply because the Sejuani has been taken away, and she's just been dominating playing so far. We saw her just in the last series, even though, you know, contracts, a couple hit and misses on those ultimates in the end. Sejuani is still just such a powerful champion, but with her off the board, Gragas rises up in priority. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is going to mean for HKA. They get the chance to lock the AD carry first with Brakan band. Stock and Zaya goes down just a little bit, so the Tristana is the choice. I don't know if the stock necessarily goes down in Zaya. I'm personally of the favor that I still really love Zaya. I think she pairs up with a lot of good supports. That said, Alistar is still readily available, and Alistar can really throw a wrench in Zaya's day because she is a lower mobility ADC, especially when she doesn't have that ultimate to free her up. That's a good point. Strong, independent bird woman. Don't need no man. Let's see if Hong Kong... She ah, trades up. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Hong Kong attitude. What are they going to lock in next? You talked about the cast in, and that's what they're going to pick. And they believe that they have the best cast in in the LMS. Mission feels very confident on this champion. It's one of their most banned domestically. So I'm assuming that Fnatic ha have scouted HK and know this, and they just think that they can take it. So a lot of pressure on Caps right now, and he's not going to get a lot of assistance to deal with this. Well, Fnatic did have a little bit of a rough time against the cast in not too long ago, so maybe Hong Kong attitude are hoping for a repeat there. The big scary thing, though, is then all of the wave clear does fall into Unified's hands, and if Unified is ever out of position, they don't have that secondary carry to just uh, draw out games, to be able to wave clear freely and, and create hiatuses there. Yeah, well, we'll see what Unified's able to get done in this game, but for Fnatic, they've locked the Zaya 15 seconds to keep on going. Do they want to pick a support up here? Seems like it would be the next logical step. It's typically how Fnatic like to structure their drafts as well. They take jungle support and ADC in the top three picks. They could go for the mid laner, though, simply because they know it's a Cassidy and just try to get Chaps, or uh, Chaps, <laughs> Caps a favorable matchup before that uh, pool starts getting sculpted down. So you've been brushing up on your British English, Frosco. But for I've Hong Kong, I've really gone medic. <laughs> Well, for Hong Kong Attitude, they can fill out their top lane here, and Shen might be the choice to protect either of those big carries. A lot of hyper carrying around, so add a little tank into the mix. This is actually a comfort pick for Rerus. He's known for his ability to split push, and the team really identifies his strength in recognizing when to push the lane versus when to join the team fight. Naturally, a champion like Shen makes that so much stronger, and this is the big pick that I wanted to see hit the band board then. If you're going to take the Shen, you need to pinch the Galio. Soas has been an absolute monster on this champion as well as the Shin. So by pri prioritizing top lane this high around, I feel like this is HKA recognizing, respecting Soaz's power on these two picks and denying him both. Mm -hmm. Have to go for something a little bit different. Of course, Galio has been pretty much the most popular top laner at this tournament so far. Now the bands start coming into the jungle, the Rex side band away from Hong Kong Attitude, and it's back over to HK for their final band. Could just continue to whittle away that jungle pool. I expect it to be for Fnatic, simply because HKA haven't locked in their jungler yet. Okay, last couple seconds tick away, and there's Cho'Gath off the board. Means that Soaz might be forced onto the Maokai. We all know how much he enjoys that champion. Best champion. Totally loves it, right? 18 seconds to go for Fnatic now, and they have one more ban. Do they continue to hit the jungle pool here? I would expect so, unless they just feel comf uh, confident knowing what God Kwai will reach for in the jungle. Elise was uh, heavily banned or taken away in the beginnings of playing. She's now kind of faded out. We did just see a Zach Lax last game. Yeah, and... Godquai will have to do something completely different than what we've seen him on so far because he's only had a handful of games with Gragas. Of course, the Jarvan and the Rek'Sai all picked away from him are banned. So let's see if they decide to go for something else now. And obviously, they need a support. Maybe they pick that up first and try to get something on the last time around. Yeah, it makes sense. There's no reason to reach for your jungler. Fnatic aren't going to try to take that one away since they already have the Gragas locked in. I said that Alistar has a pretty decent matchup into the Zaya just because it's a, it's really hard for her to get away from him as soon as he goes in, so it makes sense to look for Ali here. All right, so what does Fnatic pair with the Zaya to try and counteract that a little bit? 
I mean, you could just go for uh, doubling down on the pushing power for Zaya or doubling down on the protection for Zaya. So something like an Ardent Sensor support would work here, like the Janna, or maybe you go for a, a traditional pushing support like the Karma. Um, my big thing, though, is that I prefer when Jezus is on hard, engage, playmaking champions. Not that he can't play the Janna, but the last time that we saw Fnatic run a Janna composition, it was up to Reckless to literally Tristana jump forward to start fights, even when Broxa was on the likes of Sejuani. They are that reliant on Jezus being the primary engage tool for them. So it's not going to be that this time around. However, they do have some hard engage. You got the Gragas available or Broxa, you have the Maokai. It's a pretty beefy front line to try and wear through. It's not about the access to a hard engage, because I agree with you. You look at Maokai, you look at Gragas, you do not need a hard engage support. You've got that in spades throughout your composition. But again, it's the responsibility that Jezus has to the team. All right, now this is going to be something completely out of left field there with that Ezreal jungle locked in. We were wondering when we would start seeing this one. And with all the junglers, the big tanks taken off the board, Godquai's got himself a damaging pick. Okay, I'm very excited. I knew that this was probably going to come up. The team has been practicing a lot, so they are going to feel very comfortable taking the Ezreal jungle. And it makes a lot of sense. They want to try to punish Broxa. Broxa has been a very, uh, let's say, low effective jungler in the early game. He's much more about that mid game. He's much more about the late game team fighting and he's a huge part of that, but he's just kind of non-existent in the early game outside of maybe some jungle tracking. With a hyper aggressive jungler like Ezreal, you can get into his face, you can start camping different lanes, and you can set the tempo. And that's why I think you really want to exploit Fnatic. Their team fighting has been great, but their early game is suspect and HKA can hit them hard with this type of pick. And for HKA, it's right inside their wheelhouse to try and get ahead early on. These guys are all fantastic laners in their own right pretty much been training hard on all of their solo queues just making themselves a little bit stronger bit by bit by bit and let's see if it all comes together for the early game for Hong Kong Attitude of course big expectations for this team they've said they want to be in the top 16 they want to be progressing on to the stage and prove that they are the real deal within the world's environment and if you can knock off a team like Fnatic, I think that is definitely a tick mark in your favor. I mean, people look at this group, they look at this best of five, they say, this is the closest one, this is the hardest one. But both these teams, if they want to go the distance, it's never going to be an easy road. You don't want to go the distance simply because it was gifted to you. You want to go the distance because you're the best. You've got to be able to pull it out in the end. So now, Fnatic starting up on the blue side in game number one. They built themselves that solid team fighting composition they like, but it could be a rocky laning phase. We're about to find out as we load up in this first game of our best of five. So now it's about where are these teams going to focus into their early game. We've talked at length about how Fnatic, their early game has been a bit suspect. Uh, I think it, it personally makes sense. I'm, there's kind of two schools of thought here. Either Fnatic simply just don't know how to play an early game, which I don't believe is true, or they recognize kind of what the strong composition is in the meta, you know, tank top, uh, hyper carry that scales up in the, in the, uh, the bottom lane, and then like a wave clear or, you know, pressure oriented mid lane. And those usually tend to spike around kind of the mid and the late game. So it kind of makes sense that their game would be a bit slower pace. You know, they don't have to play the early game to be successful, especially with how important Baron is to ending games. These compositions are all going to come online by the time that Baron uh, becomes a factor. And usually you're just going to team fight it out. So, you know, maybe Fnatic have this, uh, have this mastermind plan where it's fine. You know, we're fine giving away some early game pressure because come push to shove, we're going to be ready anyway. So long as they can actually pull it off. But yeah, Fnatic as a team, Historically, especially in, in this iteration of Fnatic, over the course of the year, they, they have been a little bit stubborn about their compositions until they get punished about it. The most famous example being Rift Rivals this week. Then they changed things up completely and found great success. And as long as it still works, I can't see any reason why Fnatic would shift away from it. And here's the thing, you know, looking at Fnatic domestically, I was actually very impressed with this team for their ability to carry from every single lane. You know, Caps can go off, so as his, his Gnar, his Jarvan stats are so impressive. Uh, everyone knows the potential that Reckless can put out. But coming into play-ins, it's been a rather one-dimensional Fnatic. And again, I have to trust the team, the, uh, the history, the organization, and the experience, and just say that, you know, maybe they're not showing anything. Maybe that they just believe this is the best way to play the game. And yeah, it's only really cost them one game that didn't matter against young generations. So, pressure's on now. Like, how dominant are Fnatic going to come out? Yeah, that's always a question we have to ask. But for HK, they want to be able to do a lot in the early game. Of course, it's not just early game, right? The damage is going to get pretty real as this game goes on. You've got a Cassidy and a Tristana, that Ezreal. I mean, it's all going to scale up pretty effectively. But the style of play that HK like to do is, of course, always going to be getting ahead in that early game. Because it's spotting out the blue buff start. And move, I should say. Their early game success is really dependent on God Quai. And normally, he's the uh, he's the jungler that they haven't played the majority of their games with. They do have a split jungle pool between Gemini and God Quai. Uh, God Quai's played about 15 games now for them, whereas Gemini has played about 30. 
And they just like the communication. He's been with the team longer. He used to be the 80 carry. Roll swapped into the jungle position, so he should feel super confident on a pick like Ezreal jungle. Yeah, it fits him exactly. Checking in with how the lanes are all going, of course, it's been pretty steady. We wanted to talk about Brox just setting things up early and what Dodge Quiet can do to punish him. So far, it's just about the early jungle clear, and it'll be telling where the junglers decide to put their attention first. There's a ton of kill pressure up into the top lane as well as the bottom lane. You want to hit Maokai early if you want to go up there and, and work in tandem with the uh, the CC from Shen. Um, but because you are Ezreal, you do just have ridiculous amounts of damage coming out of the jungle position. So. Uh, I feel that like HKA have more versatile options about how they want to attack the map, and now it's just a matter of where does God Quiet actually strike. Looks like he's a little bit preoccupied with his chickens. However, Broxa, he's on the Krugs too, so it's going to be a little bit of a slow to start there. Yeah, and then on the other side, if Broxa does want to have an impact in the lane phase, he can look mid lane before Kastanen has level 6 and gets a lot of safety there. Or perhaps he does look up from the top lane. Yes, uh, both these tanks are going to be fairly susceptible early before they get their big tanky stats, and he does have the Maokai W to work with. So uh, if it's Fnatic, you're probably looking around the mid and the uh, top lane, whereas HKA can attack mid, top, and bot. Looks like HKA might be coming in for that dive. God quite hanging around the side as Caps has been pushed under tower by mission. So a lot of lanes pushing pretty much across the board right now, but Caps is going to be able to twin fang away most of this wave and not a lot of kill pressure just yet. We're only four minutes in. Now already threatening the dive. It was just a scouting mission though, placing the ward on the wolf camp. That said, a lot of junglers, Condi in particular, really like Ezreal jungle for his ability to dive with the uh, arcane shift. And now he's going to pop up top. Ward in the bush though, so Soaz knows exactly what's up. He's not too worried about being interrupted from the farm. Rira's already down to half his health bar, but of course, Roxa is making his way up slowly. They pinged in the area. Not 100% sure if he was going to be there, but still just seems like the laner's gonna be having it all to themselves for the time being. Yeah, Roxa is just shadowing underneath Soaz. Soaz wants to get this big wave into the tower. He can get a free back if he wants to, or maybe try to punish Shen a little bit underneath the tower. And he just wants to make sure that he's in the area since his top laner has to be so exposed and overextended from the side. Yeah, I see the wave pushing back. Ferris one level disadvantage over to Soaz, but the wave built up. He shouldn't have too much trouble under the tower. You know, he's threatened with his taunt, but Soaz giving him some healthy respect as Broxa hanging out in the bush, hoping that Ferris will respond and try to push back out. Meanwhile, down to the bottom, still just a farm game, pretty even on that CS, but Kaiwin wants to change it. In goes Unified, an instant jump up, and they do get a stun onto Reckless, instant exhaust is on. Unified rooted, pulled back, Reckless ignited, let's see if he can get the kill. Shield comes up, and Unified's gonna hop back in, instant flash, respect, there we go, back up to the top side, the action, and just keeps on going. Rearus, he's got a flash, he might have to use it, but no, he's able to walk away from the danger. Okay, so action across the map. In the end, though, it's the bottom action that I think is more important and prevalent to the game right now. That's two summoners, excuse me, three summoners burned from Fnatic. The exhaust, the flash, and the heal. And we talked about the Alistar and Tizaya, how teams really favor that matchup. It now makes it that much easier for Godfly to say, I'm coming bottom and we're looking for Reckless. Yeah, now Mission, he wants to get going in on to Caps. And it's not going to happen too much just right now. And speaking of Caps, despite the fact that he's been under pressure more or less constantly throughout this world, He's actually put up some pretty decent numbers in the CS department and not so bad on his KDA. Let's be frank, no one's gonna come to help Caps. Uh, Fnatic are notorious that they kind of leave their mid laner on an island unless, you know, Broxa happens to be on Raptors while Caps is being dove by three people. But despite the fact that this guy's constantly in 3v1, 2v1 scenarios, he has the second highest CS difference at 15, which is just so incredibly impressive and speaks to his ability as a laner. Yeah, well, Caps definitely came in as a pretty hot shot rookie into the European LCS, a long line of them. It was just one more, but he also added some interesting picks, some interesting play styles. I mentioned earlier about that back door that he pulled off on the rise. The guy's a playmaker, and he can definitely step up in the clutch. And in the lane, he usually doesn't get shut down too hard. And the coolest thing is, while that's spoken a lot as kind of a primary weakness for Fnatic, it can also be a huge strength. If you don't need to constantly be babysitting your mid laner, if he can absorb all of that pressure and all of that attention, and you can gank the top lane, you can give the attention to the bot lane, that just makes Fnatic stronger across the board when they execute on that. It's when they leave caps up to try, and then they start losing so much pressure and uh, and power through the middle of the map, that's when things go sideways. Got to talk about when he gets start when he starts getting solo killed or when the jungle just keeps making repeat visits. That being said, he is down in the CS versus the Kassadin of Mission. Of course, can't really say the same about this bot lane. Pretty dead on even. Reckless going for the Berserker Grief starts after he was forced out of lane, but we see a swap coming in. 
Yeah, and that's because they need to get away from this Alistair Trishana. They recognize that they just have a giant target painted on them, so Fnatic are trying to trigger a, uh, a lane swap. Shin also has the ultimate available, so there's no reason to start fights in the bottom lane. This is a good read from Fnatic. Uh, unfortunately, it's just a little bit too slow to the punch, so tempo advantage to HKA. Yeah, they pick up the first tower, giving themselves a gold lead, and extending that out to about one and a half thousand. So I'm still pushing the wave up in the top, and the dual laners are going to be coming in, but Rebus? He'll be able to clear most of that away. That's not massive right now. He's going to be forced under tower just to back away. They're still pushing in the bottom side. Unified and Kai Wing, there's no one there to respond. And Godfly's coming in for the relief effort. Yeah, and it was the question about where Godfly was going to strike. Would he go bottom lane to help Alistar and Tristana continue to push on that inner tower? Or would he assist top lane? By going top, they're going to delay this. Oh yeah, Soaz. He's actually going to get the back and push them. And that is going to be first blood over to Soaz. On the dive, it looks like it was oh, instigated reckless. by Hong Kong Attitude. Exhaust already burned the flash and the feathers. Sink in for the kill. Meanwhile, down bot though, Kai Wing and Unify continue their push. But globally, it's still an advantage for HKA. They're going to take the inner tower. There's uh, a diminishing creep wave that's just now approached Fnatic up into the top lane. And Kai Wing and Unify should have enough time to push this wave and make their back and then rotate towards the top side. Yeah, they never stop Fnatic. They're just leaving things open right now as they try to push down on the bottom. And Mission's going to get a back away. And it just seems like. Fnatic, a little bit under the gun, decided they just didn't want to push their luck. That was cute for Mission. <laughs> he teleports back in. That's instant. Wow. Okay, taking another look at this. Uh, this is huge. Even though Godquai does die to first blood, and that is pretty significant, Ezreal does need to get ahead to really be effective. He has a very expensive build coming out of the jungle. Uh, but his death here isn't in vain. They do trade one for one. First blood advantage to Fnatic because they will take down Ezreal first but they delay the tower push, which buys enough time for the bottom lane. Look at the bottom side of your map right now. Trishana and Alistar are pushing down the inner tower, and again, still global advantage and global gold lead to HKA, and this is what we expect from this team. Their pre-15 minute stats are pretty absurd. Yep, building them up as the time goes, and we talked about how they're going to have a lot of scaling in their favor. It's just that the carries necessarily aren't the ones getting the kills early on, and that's okay right now. They've been able to stabilize quite well, Okay, Broxa getting caught up, and there's Soaz there at his back. A lot of pings flying. Mission wanted to go in, but he realizes he's not going to be solo. And finally, this is now Fnatic having the slightly upper edge in terms of tempo. They reach the tower first. They've got more members rotating over to them, and another creep wave coming in. Whereas on the other side, HKA are just about to hit the first tower. Yeah, so this time it trades around back the other way, and I think Fnatic may not have been the most optimal of trades for them earlier on, but they'll be pretty happy with the fact that they've managed to get out of the laning phase, not to skate, even on the gold game, and of course it will change in just a few minutes. Now it's about what they're going to buy with this time. You can see that Rerus is trying to guard the inner tower, but how confident are Fnatic to continue to push? Here's shot Barrage coming out. Mission. There's some waves he already clipped onto the crab. That's a long range wave clear. Last couple shots. Ooh, there's a taunt. The Rox is able to interrupt it just on the edge. Mission looking to go in. Rerus stuck under tower. The barrel comes out. Not enough to secure that kill. And Jezus throws down the monsoon to keep Reckless healthy. And again, it's Rerus and Friend buying enough time to slow down Fnatic Siege, while on the other side, they continue to push into another inner tower. Yeah, so as I don't know if he's going to have as much to be able to defend here without a whole lot of backup. He just has to throw down the sapling, and there it goes. Hong Kong Attitude picking up tower number four for themselves. On the up and up versus Fnatic. And this now means that they have super access to the Rift Tail. Uh, they can just snowball onto that, or maybe rotate over to the mid lane just to dissuade Fnatic from pushing too far deep. John is here, they should be okay. All right, comes uh -oh. in, Unified, he goes deep, and there is the knock-up headbutt, both combo, and Unified getting the kill caps. Oh, he just tries to slither out too late, and even though he dishes some damage, Godquai takes caps down, and it's all HKA in the mid lane. And this is disaster from that Fnatic. They simply took the wrong way out of the lane. You know, you had the Jonathan from Disengage, they could have rotate down, and as I say that, maybe a turnaround? Nope. Slow to respond. Disengage. Slow to respond for Fnatic. And you talked about Rift Herald being up and available. It's also the Dragon Mountain down there that Mission and the rest of Hong Kong Attitude are going to be able to secure. Not a whole lot that Fnatic can do about it. And they honestly just got caught sleeping. And this has kind of been the story of Fnatic during the entire stage of Flames. The one game where they had an early lead, where they were making the uh, the tempo aggressive, you know, macro decisions, was their first game against KLG. But since then, this has been the story. And you know, Jez is not walking down. Yes, Caston's coming in with the shim, but he splits up from his team. He's just left for easy pickings, and then from bad to worse, his pass is kicked off. Yeah, it's unfortunate right now that Fnatic getting themselves caught out just a little bit. And we, we've even heard them talk a lot about how they are a team that you know, will sometimes respond a little bit emotionally and not always make the optimal plays when they don't feel things are going well. Well, that's the thing that can sometimes start off that level of thinking. 
Let's see if Fnatic can make the recovery. We're 12 minutes in, though. It's still a gold lead for Hong Kong Attitude, about 2,000. But now it looks like they're starting to feel a little bit more confident that they can take off individual plays. Soaz does not want any part of mission. And the scary thing is, is now that the towers have broken down and we're starting to play kind of the 1-3-1 one, one, or, or play around with our lane assignments, that's where HK's composition gets scary because this accident is a hard person to deal with. And they're hitting the item spikes faster, right? The Rod of Ages completed versus just a couple of components from the Cassiopeia. The Infinity Edge versus what Reckless is bringing. It's not quite finished up on his Essence Reaver, so we're going to have a fight oh, here boy. around this Rift Girl. Let's see what happens. Mission getting chased on and followed on back, and we will get bullied out. Godfly looked to try and take away the Rift Girl, but not going to happen. Monsoon keeping everybody on the Fnatic side. Help! D as Godfly gets knocked in by the barrel. Flashes away, gets the heal, staying alive, and now Fnatic trying to split attention, but they will be able to find Mission as he couldn't Rift Walk fast enough to get out of that one. Rift Girl and a kill. Big swing for Fnatic right there, and that's what's been putting them over the line in all these plans. They fumbled the early macro decisions, give away a couple free towers, don't necessarily trade even, but their team fighting is clean enough that it doesn't matter that they're able to dig themselves out of any sort of deficit they put themselves in early. Yep. Might not always work about every single time, but it's shown so far that Fnatic's strong enough to affect the comebacks and outskirmish, out trade opponents. Unfortunately for Hong Kong Attitude, they just couldn't quite find the fight where they needed it. However, Set up for them, still looking good. A lot of wards deep in this Fnatic jungle. Things flying that they know Brox is not around as he'd already backed off to base. Jez is in caps a little low on the health bars. Have to respect the damage that Unified will bring. That said, the main uh, goal for Fnatic right now is to take down that mid-tier tower. Now, you can see that Unified and Kai Wing have been moved over to just play wave clear duty, but Fnatic do have the Rift Herald. It does mean that AK are kind of extending themselves up into the mid lane. So eventually, as soon as they take care of these side lanes, Fnatic can rotate and try to push their luck mid. Although, here we go. Oh, he's the classic. On Jumping in. Feather Storm out for Reckless. Teleport coming down. Mission one of the 1v1, but he's not going to be able to take the 2v2. And Reckless might not even need any backup right there. Pulls him back, gets the root off, and wow, the outplays. Doesn't result in a kill, but still forced quite a lot out of mission. And you know, normally when Fnatic's fans see Reckless off into a side lane, it's, oh no, you know, Here's he's off into farm then. mode. This is when he gets caught, but just turning around and showing the power of Zaya and his confidence that, okay, Cassin, and you think that you have the lane assignment here, but you need to play this perfectly or I will punish you. Yeah, you called it in the pick and ban. You definitely don't need the Recon to be effective on that Zaya. And with Essence Reaver complete, he can start working towards the rest of his build. He's already dishing some seriously massive damage. I'm just saying, she is the better Tinder swipe here. <laughs> But paired up with Jesse, it's all good. All right, Unified still on wave clear duty in the mid lane. Cap's trying to do the same thing, and looks like the game is going to rotate about the mid for a little while since both towers are still up and available, and those are the only ones on that part of the map. Still a while before anything like Baron will become a possibility. It's about funneling farm, making sure that we're hitting our big item breakpoints. For Zaya, it's really about the two item spike, especially when she has the Ardent Sensor and Janna in tandem. Uh, Janna level eight. Once she's level nine, she's gonna have the five points in the shield. We talk about this all the time, but you know, then gets that added benefit of the uh, flat AD. Whereas Tristana, you know, needs to reach a little bit farther, needs the two attack speed items, so the, the shiv, the infinity edge, and whatever else that she wants before she really becomes effective. Feeling comfortable enough to just solo take those fights. We've seen Unified though really go in Hyphy to jump on in. Knowing that he'll get the reset, at the very least, his support's going to go in and back him up. I think he had to pump the brakes a little bit. Just what? Speaking of. He wasn't feeling too confident when he ran into Zaya and the teleport. Um, big eyes, though, on Godfly. You know, this hasn't been the snowballed Ezreal jungle game that you really need to be effective on the champion. Okay, high wing gets the push back. He might have sealed his own death warrant there as he goes on in, gets the knock up. The cat's coming out. Monsoon to keep everyone on the Fnatic side healthy. And Rerus is going to tack back out as he gets the taunt off onto So has no one from Hong Kong attitude going down. But this will open up the chance to push with Rift Arrow. Yeah, I said that as soon as Fnatic felt comfortable about their side lanes, they were just going to funnel all their resources into that mid lane, use the Rift Hilt, and take the free structure. And here they go. They're now within touching distance of this gold difference between them and HKA. Yeah, Shelly wants to go into round two, but got quite mission trying to push that one back. So Fnatic haven't opened up the map here. Let's see what they end up doing next. Still the gold in favor of Hong Kong Attitude, but that's pretty slim. Yeah, and unfortunately, it kind of feels like the clock strikes midnight on HK's gold advantages. You know, 2.15 minutes, they're, they're feeling comfortable, but as soon as it ticks over to 16 to 18 minutes, suddenly they start to slip backwards. Yeah. Fortunately for them right now, Fnatic's starting to look like they're the ones in the driver's seat. Reckless once on a side lane. We have seen this many times, as you referred to. He does need to be careful, though. His team's not pressuring anything underneath him, and he doesn't have a lot of uh, offensive vision pushed into the enemy jungle to extend much farther. So I like the respect that Reckless is showing, though. Just hoover up some farm, 
stacking his, his pockets a little bit, picks himself up a zeal, but not pushing his lock. Yeah, not going to go too far and too deep without a whole lot of backup. We have seen Fnatic sometimes use him to bait things out there, but not this time around. Rerus is actually going to be the one rushing on that side. Of course, on that Shen, pretty much right in his comfort zone. A lot of wards deep here for Hong Kong Attitude, so if anybody from Fnatic decides to go through their bot side jungle, they're going to know all about it. And this is what HK were unable to execute on in kind of the last big team fight. They weren't able to pull Fnatic apart into these side lanes. Uh, Fnatic just saw that Kasim and Shin were in a side lane and decided to commit heavily towards the mid lane. So uh, a lot of respect to Alistair and Tristana. They need to be careful because it feels like as soon as Fnatic see Mission and Rearist off to the side, they're just going to steamroll over mid. Yeah, quick decision making. Of course, they turn their way towards the Cloud Drake. An easy peasy pickup for this Fnatic team, so they'll be a little bit more quick to try and move around the map now. Back to mid they go to try and control that and not let Hong Kong Attitude have the inside tack. Still a lot of vision deep in those jungles down in that bottom lane, but there's nothing they can really do with it at the moment. It also makes sense that HKA would just give away the Cloud Dragon. They didn't have vision control of that area anyway. It's just the Cloud, and they're not feeling comfortable in terms of their item break points and, and feeling strong right now. So it's about the next Dragon. It's a waiting game for Hong Kong Attitude. And, you know, we talked about how for them it, it does seem to be all about building up the big lane leads. That kind of evaporated for this team. But there's still so much more that they can actually do. I'm just curious if they're going to be able to pull off these fights. The Fnatic have just been so much better at in this playing stage. I mean, they have a ton of mobility that they don't necessarily need to take the full 5v5. That They can try to split up when all the 10 members are, are grouped up into kind of like a 2v2 or 3v2 type of scenario. Um, but the guy to watch is really unified. The amount of damage and his damage share for this team is just absolutely ridiculous. And on a pick like Tristana, he's certainly armed to do so. It's just that he's now looking down the barrel of someone like Reckless. Normally, we talk about that high damage share that Unified has as a result of the fact that, um, that Godfly doesn't actually do nearly as much of it as his jungle counterparts. But now he's on an Ezreal. Now he's on this type of champion that's going to be able to dish out a lot of damage. So I'd be curious to see his numbers after this game, because if they match up, that's a problem. I mean, he's certainly going to be putting out more damage than usual, simply because it's a, a poke champion versus kind of an all-in engaged tank. Uh, that said, he's still not feeling super confident. Uh, he's starting to create a little bit of space between him and Gragas, but he's been sitting on a sheen for what feels like forever. Yeah, he really needs that eye to try and get things going here. Still a little while before. Trinity Force? Uh, Trinity Force, yeah, sorry. That other item, the other item that does a lot of damage. I trusted you, I was just gonna take that. I was like, yeah, the Infinity Edge on Ezreal. No, it should I mean, that, that would do a lot of damage, admittedly. The Trinity Force yeah. into Dusk Void. I mix those up all the time, apparently. <laughs> They're very expensive swords. They, they are definitely. Well, the one is three swords. That's where I really messed up, because I didn't think about that. But the Baron is going to be up in about 10 seconds. Now, I don't think that's going to be taken right away, but you can see that Fnatic are setting up vision for it already. Going to be a big important objective for both teams to try and take out Rerus and Soaz finding each other down on the bottom side. Soaz is decidedly more difficult to take down. He's got a Bramble Vest sitting on that, on top of a little bit more MR for himself and the Spirit Visage. Yeah, he's got the Bramble Vest as well as the Ninja Tabby, so he feels completely fine in terms of the armor front. And then he also has his MR with the Spirit Visage completed. So Soaz feels super confident looking across from Rerus right now. Um, Rerus is just trying to control the fusion control for him, so has to play a ton of respect to Fnatic right now and can't get the deep push that he really wants. Yeah, well, all those wards that were set up earlier on when HK had a lot more control of this map is kind of gone out the window and there's not a whole lot of inside tech that they can really get. Fnatic do see this Kassin upriver nearby the Baron pit, pinging on it right now, but there's really not going to be a whole lot of response. So it seems like the Baron control wards all being taken out and replaced in favor of Hong Kong attitudes. And this is the early stages of that dance. Oh, hello. Looks like they found Unified and he's going to get the hop up and away right into the Raptors. And just going to get a little bit more clear off on him so they're not dishing out too much damage as he goes away. And huge credit to Unified. Didn't have to burn his heal, retained his flash right there. It did look very close, so good attempt by Broxa to find a very important pick. But Unified keeps his cool and walks away. This is why you see those Tristana so frequently. Not only does she do so much damage, but you got a lot of self peel getting everybody out of your face. And we'll see as Reckless and Jezus get on the side push here. Still being pinged out by Hong Kong Attitudes. Just a waiting game, trying to play the waves back and forth to make sure that there isn't a big advantage on either side of the map. Mid but lane, this, kind of all but forgotten at the moment. This is the most important part of the game, though, because this will be the, the big decider. You know, we've been kind of in this, this very intense tug of war, and someone's got to lose. Oh boy, Caps trying to go all the way back under tower. Does make it out nice and safe. A little bit of help from Jezus on the back side, but now you see Hong Kong Attitude looking to try and push in, or maybe they decide now is the time. We're going to attempt that Baron Unified, getting a little far forward to try and get a few chip shots off on that tower, but nothing doing. Shen moving down towards the bottom, but he has got his teleport. No stand united. Yep, Looks still like... needs to be incredibly respectful, though, as we're back to the Barrelin... Barrelin? 
The Baron Dance. I'm used to calling the Baron Dance the Harlem Shake. Yeah, the, it's the Baron Shake now. The Baron Shake. I feel like this is more of a tango, though. It this feels, one is. It feels a bit more graceful. This is a bit more of the, the European style of Baron Dance that we're definitely a little more used to seeing. A little back and forth, and then eventually someone just throws the Baron. Like not always. I'm not being. I'm not being entirely. I was gonna say. I feel like Fnatic has been really consistent. No, they're there. they're good at it. I was saying Panny you. That's a whole other story. Their ability to sculpt fights around the Barons have uh, pretty much saved them a lot of games in the planes. Again, their their setting of tempo and their ability to say we're you know we're getting the first tower. We're gonna trade two towers up on you. Um, they've pretty much fallen flat on their face throughout the planes group stage. But it just comes to that one Baron fight where. You know, Fnatic have the perfect vision set up, or just did the perfect flank, and then Roxa follows up, and they don't disengage, they keep going forward. Fnatic suddenly close the bear trap on you and, and rotate into a Baron or rotating into an Infernal Drake. Yeah, and of course, it's kind of better equipped for their comp to do that as opposed to what Hong Kong Attitude are bringing. They have those side lane pushers. They have you know, a bit more of a catch. If you look at the Kassadin, you look at the Shen, and even the Ezreal, it's a lot of damage, but in the team fights, may not necessarily shine as much as some of that AoE that you know, the likes of Caps and Reckless can do. I mean, there's certainly a ton of damage on both the compositions. If they're well balanced, they've got multiple damage threats, great tanks. It's all scaling, too. Uh, you pointed out, though, that HK do have the uh, added benefit that they can try to manipulate more of these side lanes. So Cassiopeia, she's not going to be in the same safety net uh, when she's playing the side lane. That's why Reckless has really been picking up a lot of that side lane farm and a lot of that side lane responsibility. But this is where they're comfortable fighting, right? The two item spike you were talking about on the Zaya, that's, of course, completed. We're still waiting to see if she's not to get into the three. And Fnatic. They're now deciding to grab a little bit of extra easier objectives. The Ocean Drake on the board should be a pretty simple take for them because there's not a whole lot of response where Hong Kong Attitude are on the map right now. Still focusing on those side lanes. The Kassin pushing up top, the Shen pushing down on bottom. And it's focusing on the farm again. It's HK recognizing that, hey, we're not strong enough. We don't feel 100% confident right now that we could just dominate these 5v5s. We're still waiting on one more item from Tristana, so let them have the Ocean Drake. Yeah. Let them have it for now. Of course. We haven't seen the more explosive Infernal Drakes that have pretty much been in just about every game. I think there was like twice as many Infernal Takes as any other Dragon so far in this tournament. Something like 30. Made them really, really explosive fights happening, but now at 25 minutes, it's not one to be found, and even the next Dragon's going to be the Mountain. But the fact that this mid lane tower is still standing at 24 minutes is a big problem for HK. It means that they're having a harder time kind of blitzing in their deep vision on either the blue or red side jungle. Look to change their fortunes right here. The Caps is still there to defense. Unified gets the turn around. Doesn't look into the petrifying gaze. With the Janus Shield, they're able to save the tower mid for now. Fnatic instantly mobilizing for the defense. Hong Kong attitude. They want that tower real bad, but they're going to have to earn it. Looking for Brox. The Kaiwin goes in with the knockup. Static ship, AoE damage. Mission wanted to find it in, and True Shop Barrage is going to peg Caps, but not enough to take him out. And looking down bottom, you can see that Rerus actually disengaged from Maokai. He's now recently stepped back forward to try to keep him locked down. So. HK may be feeling confident enough that they don't need to pull their shin, that they can actually just win in the 4v4 right now or get what they want, but everyone is going to disengage. Yeah, pressure still on for Fnatic trying to save this mid-tower. Hong Kong Attitude still hanging around the Baron Pit, controlling all that vision. Fnatic would have to, of course, go in there to try and stop him out. Mission, he's still on a mission up towards the top side to keep the waves of pushing, but the dance continues back and forth. The fact that Mission's got to bounce between both mid and top lane, though, and Caps is able to keep CS with him, it's pretty impressive. Able to do it pretty consistently. Well, we talked about the CSD of 15. Throughout the rest of the game, it's pretty good too. Caps is definitely not slouched on most champions. And he is getting more support now that the lanes have broken. You know, it is Broxa and Jezus standing behind him, making sure that they can't break that mid lane tower. But just to re emphasize, it is so important that Fnatic still have that standing. And it's what's denied HKA a lot of their ability to exploit their 1 3 1 because they can't get deeper uh, deeper vision in the jungle because mid lane still stands. Yeah, that's the difficult part right now. So for Hong Kong Attitude, still frustrating them to try and break into that mid side. And now we start to see them gathering a little bit more of their vision once again, poking into the jungle of Fnatic on both the bottom and the top sides. And there's that three item power spike for the Tristana. Is this where they start forcing out the Baron? So I would expect that they're going to feel more comfortable. They also have the completed Trinity Force on Ezreal jungle. Um, you still are looking for kind of the three items for easy. Probably going to be the Death Blade coming in next. That said, uh, we're also very close for the Infinity Edge for Reckless. Yeah, that's going to start turning things around pretty well, too. And two item power spike on the Zai, he's still been dishing damage. But otherwise, I feel like both teams have been, you know, pretty respectful, just kind of gentlemen's agreement. We're going to farm, we're going to get our items. We'll see it in the 5v5. Uh, and now it's coming on to that time of the game. Yeah, you can see both teams getting a little bit more trigger happy, trying to go in on each other and see if they can get a quick pick to try and turn a fight in their favor. Still, no one's going to find it just about now. I mean, this is one of those games we have more towers and kills, and it kind of teeters on a knife edge for a little while. 
but it just takes one team fight, Pyra, and it will be a massive swing of who will win this game. Oh yeah, now the minions moving in towards the bottom side as Rearus goes to join the team, back up towards top. Fnatic are the ones that have controlled vision around the Baron pit. And see if HKA can try to find a collapse here. Kai Wing moving around the mid once more, finds Caps out, gets grounded. Rest of Fnatic on the chase, looking for the cow. They want themselves a burger today. Not gonna find it. And frankly, it should be HKA that are looking for the plays at that moment. You know, it's them who have priority over the mid lane. They've got the Shin rotating first. He's gonna get to fights faster because he has the Stan United, but constantly it's Fnatic. Ho! Oh. And they found a catch right on top of the Ezreal Shen Shield coming in, but Godquai is gonna get deleted before he can do it, and Fnatic instantly pinging onto the Baron. Let's see if they're gonna be able to secure that one down. Without the smite, HK will have to distract. Which means that HK have to fight and try to force them off the Baron. There is no option to look for a smite steal here. Yeah, no vision for them thanks to the control war denying the red that they've already got inside, but a teleport is coming down right now. We'll see if Fnatic can secure this one up right quick. No Mountain Drake for them, but still plenty of damage. Reaver's coming in. It looks like that's gonna get secured as they got the zone out on the mission. Fnatic, clean take on the Baron and looking for more as they go for mission. Who Tries to jump over the wall, gets the Blast Stone Express, but he is on the wrong side of that mid tower. Really regretting the fact that they haven't been able to pick it up. He Rift walks over into the pit. He should be uh, out home and to safety, but it is a clean Baron pickup from Fnatic. And like I said, it, it just comes down to one team fight that's massively going to swing this game in the other direction. Yes, indeed. So, for Fnatic with the Baron empowered minions, making it even harder for HKA to push into this mid. They're the ones who are fine, and even if you don't get the kills, you can still find exactly what you need, just getting one pick. But I want to hit back to my previous point. Look where Shin was. You know, he was starting to rotate so much earlier for this fight, but it's not HKA that are ever putting themselves in a position to try to start a fight, to try to use the fact that they did have priority in those side lanes. It's always Fnatic that are looking for the plays, and in that instance, making them happen. Yeah, surprised a little bit of Hong Kong Attitude's passivity, and maybe just getting this game a little inside their heads, and not necessarily trying to play it off to win, but just playing it to not lose any harder and the gold lead of course slim but still been in Fnatic's favor we're approaching that 30 minute mark and they've got a lot of damage still we need to see them put it to the use and how much damage can Fnatic do with this Baron looking for tower on the bottom side even Reckless hops over now joined by Brox so that's four members they get the 4-1 on that's a pretty quick clear out of those waves. Static Shield will do that for you. And Mission says, I don't want any part of this. And as I said, now this is where the composition from HK can be punished. They don't have two forms of wave clear. They're entirely reliant on Unified being in position with this Tristana. And if he's ever not, it's just going to drop just like that uh, inner did. Yep, pretty easy to cut through those. And now Soaz is keeping Rebus locked up. Remember, he could always cancel a teleport out of the Shen, but he doesn't even have Stand United up and available. So Fnatic, they're still going to have a bit more of a global advantage, taking down the inner on the bottom, looking to push for the mid. And Mission, he's moving up to try and take out Soaz. He's going to be locked up for now. Let's see if they can hold him on. Redemption coming through, going to keep him even healthier. And a 2v1, he's just keeping pushing them back. And Fnatic looking to join him up towards the top side. Soaz doesn't even care about tanking on the Tower of Damage. And Looks like that's going to be all she wrote for this tower up in the top. Five to four in okay. favor of Fnatic. They've got inside track. They can now just rotate back towards the mid lane. Uh, Soaz does have teleport, so he's fine to make his back right here. And if the Tough enemy shot. team engages, he'll just TP in. And there we go. Looking for mission. He even gets knocked up. The CC chain is real, and Caps is going to be able to finish off the Cassidy. And these towers are falling like dominoes right now, 30 minutes into the game. And Soaz, teleport comes in. He's got a giant wave. He says, guys, just come here. We're just going to try to break the base. Yep, just keep it going on one, two, three lanes. Not a whole lot the Hong Kong attitude can do. They are running out of options right now, and we expect to see that desperate fight to try and turn things in their favor. They do have their items, they do have the spikes they've needed, but they are running out of base right now. One tower falls in the mid, the bottom. Minions are being marched forward, and they just keep on giving ground here, respecting the damage that Fnatic can do, but it looks like it might be too little, it might be too late. Reavers is going to get knocked up, locked up, and rooted underneath this tower and once more they just keep firing on another tower falls after the inhibitor it's going to be another easy inhib fanatic it's just like they decide to keep on pushing and nothing can stop this team slow march to victory and the interesting thing about hk versus fanatic were the massive stylistic differences statistically when you look at these teams you have hk the early game team you know pre-15 minutes they build up these leads can they sprint fast enough off the finish line to beat fanatic before they come online in the mid game before they come online in the, the late game 5v5s. And the answer right now for game one is no. And I that's have, the thing. Take a breather. People can criticize Fnatic's lackluster early game all you want. And I'm not gonna, you know, stand behind and say they made 100% the right macro decisions. There are obvious holes and flaws here. 
but it doesn't matter because they're confident enough that come that 5v5, they're going to execute, they're going to do the right thing, they're going to find the critical pick, and they're going to win the game anyway. And they're going to be able to pull Hong Kong Attitude into those 5v5s that they know they can win. So far, the 1 3 1 strategy that we kept seeing out of Hong Kong Attitude, it was so difficult for them to go deep when they didn't have control in the mid. And lo and behold, the mid tower still stands for Fnatic. So Hong Kong Attitude, they just couldn't quite do enough early. And a lot of that did fall on God Kwai because he didn't take off on that jungle Ezreal, but he really needed to. And frankly, just got outscaled of the usefulness that Gragas is going to bring to his team. Yeah, God Kwai, obviously a little bit more at home on some of those tanky junglers, but with all of them banned away, he goes on to the Ezreal. Maybe he would be at home on an AD carry like Ezreal, but at the same time, it seemed like he just didn't quite have the amount of pressure that Broxa did. And even though Broxa didn't make any trips to the mid lane, he was still pretty effective early game. That said, you can see that there's still some fight left in HKA. They are looking for the uh, the cheeky flank play. They still have a lot of power in their casting in as well as their Tristana. Yes, the Ezreal has fallen behind, but Fnatic, they're not out of the woods just yet. Oh, they've got to put it away with the Nexus, grab that 50 gold, and move on to game number two. Now Soaz still trying to duke it out with Mission. Not getting the better of him, though. This cast in, not quite at the level he'd like to be 33 minutes into this game. And back inside the base is HKA Unified looking to take down the Gragas, but Broxa tanks it all up, shrugs off the damage. Waves crashing into the top so side. As. So as on the flank, there's a hop away, but everyone's going to get rooted up. And Kai Wing is healthy enough to tank through things, but that redemption means Fnatic are as well. As they break open the base up towards the top, it looks like they decide to try and take the fight to end the game. The Chen Shield's on as Kai Wing staying alive. Mission trying to cut them off on the flank, but it looks like Fnatic know when to not push their luck backing out. Moving right back on in once they're in safe range. They are sticking around for this one. Here comes Broxa. Okay, gets the knockup, and they look for the Tristana, deleting it. It's Reckless taking out his opposite number. Now Rearus will be the next to fall. That shield is not quite enough, and Mission never got a chance to go in for the flank. So as following the flash all the way through onto Gatwai, and caps on a killing spree means that this game is going to get closed out. Number one over to Fnatic, 34 minutes into this game. And once they hit the go button, there was no stop in this team. 1-0 up. No early game, no problem for Fnatic. They just meet you in the mid game, they meet you in the late game, and they just have cleaner team fights, cleaner picks, and know when to turn it on. Fortunately for Hong Kong Attitude, they had the first 15 minutes on lock as is usual, but they just didn't have the trajectory to keep on moving in that mid game. And you can see frustration on the faces of their players. Unfortunately for them, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board for game two. And I really do have to put a magnifying glass over HK's mid game. You know, when they went out to the 1 3 1, initially they did have the superior lane assignments. They could threaten with the Cassidy, but it just took them so long to execute on it. Frankly, they never really executed on it correctly that suddenly they couldn't deal with. They couldn't deal with Soaz. They couldn't execute on the 1-3-1, -one, and Fnatic just ran them over. Yeah, I mean, it was so nice to see in the early game that they were getting the better trades down. Fnatic were kind of, you know, hustling up to the top lane, trading a little bit late, but then everything kind of evened out. And it, it did seem like HK just kind of pumped the brakes a little bit too much. Yeah, and a lot of that was credit to Rerus. I think he did a great job slowing down a lot of uh, Fnatic's, you know, tower pressuring. The fact that he was able to stall so long allowed his team to trade up, but that gold lead wasn't enough. Unfortunately, no. Now, to hear how Fnatic took the first game of the series, let's send it over to Dracos and the analysts. Thank you very much, Pyra. Before we get into the meat of the game, I think it's best for us to start back in the pick and ban phase because we did have some question marks on the side of Fnatic. I'll be the first to say it. The second casting gets locked in and I don't see Illusion. I get scared. Pew, 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 pew. Not yeah. that it's the only option. Yeah, I just get worried, man. I was sitting there being like, come on, Caps, this is like an easy matchup for you. But HK, they're throwing out the challenge. They're basically saying, you know what? I don't think you can play Lucian. I'm pretty confident that you're not going to bring it out. And they called his bluff and it worked out. Yeah, that's what was surprising to me is you take a first pick cast and only bang out a rise. There's so many things that can potentially be taken into it. They take the Cassio and surprisingly, he actually loses that matchup pretty hard. Uh, he was down 10, 15 CS around the 10, 15 minute mark. So really not a great look at the start for Caps, though he's sure. going to end up bouncing back. And when we look at this game, of course, it did feel very much like a macro game for the vast majority of it. Teams rotating around, looking to trade towers well, back and too. forth. Exactly, and it felt like HKA were pretty comfortably in the lead, then passed it back to Fnatic. It was, it was sort of all over the place. I felt like what we saw was an initial lane dominance coming out from the side of HKA. You could see CS advantages all across the board from them, and it was what we were talking about earlier, where a lot of their leads have come from their laning prowess. Unified stepped up massively against Reckless and Jezzes down in the bottom lane. It was in part thanks to the matchup, of course, but the fact that they were able to push them out, even force Fnatic into this swap, just goes to show the strength of their individual laners. The problem was, Fnatic, they have a little bit more experience moving around the map, and often they did have that tempo advantage, and they slowly and pulled that goal And to be fair, 
their experience. I think they over trusted it yeah. once or That's twice. Yeah, they made a mistake. Well, when we but. take a look at our first replay here, you can see that ultimately that experience sort of counted against them because they did not respect the potential collapse. And, and there's a lot of global tools here on the side of HKA. They were just pushing bot lane Fnatic was, rotated mid, tried to get there first, but a Shen cast in, did a good job cutting off the escape, forced Jezus into the mid lane where the top side of HK was collapsing. They get a couple of kills. They were not actually able to break that mid turret there, which ends up being a huge problem for them because it took them forever to try and get any pressure down around there. And then their 1-3-1 basically fell apart because they never could push in deep enough into Fnatic's side. All right, we talked about this a lot, but I think we have to hit it again. HKA, why are they struggling to close this out? Because after that play, it felt like they should be in absolute control. But you're right, nothing happened for, for so long in the so game. The reason why I think this exists is because God quite needs to be their facilitator. I think that he's one of the big engages. I think that when we saw the most success out of him was on, he was on picks like Jarvan specifically. And what we're seeing now is he's on a jungle Ezreal. The only real good way you can start off a team fight or any kind of proactive play is maybe you get a flanking Shen or a flanking Alistair and then you use the Shen as a follow-up. But you've got an Ezreal jungle, you've got a cast in mid and you've got a Tristana already. These aren't engaged champions. They can't start things for you. And because there was no proactivity from the support or the top, it ended up just being this standstill where Fnatic just slowly crept up with their vision and pressure and playmaking that HKA didn't really have any answers. I think that's the big thing for me too, is just that there was a time where you saw the cast and go bot lane, tries to have, hop on the Reckless, he gets chunked out and it felt like after that, Kassin just got really, really passive and would just resort to going in the top lane, pushing that wave out and then kind of roaming mid but not committing to it. When you have double teleport, Kassin and Shen, you have a lot of tools to make plays on the solo lane down on the bot side. Go attack the enemy top laner, that Maokai. If you get a kill, after already taking the two outer turrets, you can potentially get a mid inhib, or a bot inhib, excuse me, if you actually turn that play, but they almost never looked for it after that point. And while it relatively was a, not a high pace, high action game, when Fnatic finally found an opportunity, they were the ones who took control back as we take a look at this next replay brought to you by Acer Predator, we can see that, hey, Caps may have suffered early game, but you give this man a shot, he is going to take it. And it's just them wandering through the jungle. They find an Ezreal who's not respecting the fact that Fnatic are pushing at mid. Even through the Shen ultimate, it's not enough. And the Miasma really just locking down the mobility that you do have on Ez, which allows Fnatic to very quickly translate over to the Baron. The one play that they need to break this game back in their favor, but you have to say that Fnatic was doing a great job dealing with the 1-3-1 already. They hadn't lost an objective after that 15 minute mark, basically, and they are able to cleanly convert onto the Baron, something that HKA really struggles with as well. If they do get a pick off, it doesn't feel like they quickly turn that around, and you see just how fast that gold graph exploded into Fnatic's favor. And it's just the thing that we have we saw from the group stages now translating into these elimination matches, because Fnatic, we know that it's not uncommon for them to fall behind in the early. It happened a lot against Young Generation, even against Chaos Ladder and Gamers. They should have fallen behind early, but they just were able to outplay their opposition. And now HKA, talented individuals, are finding avenues to get that lead, but then they're not translating it later on into the game. And Fnatic are just finding these opportunities in the mid to late. And I think that's the frustrating thing, is because as good as Fnatic played in the late game, ultimately we have to have to wonder, you know. Like, what can HKA do if this is such a big issue? Because if it was picks and bans, we could talk about different champions. But when you're not able to reliably snowball those leads, that feels like something much bigger. Well, I think what I like is that they're choosing to go back to red side. They're identifying that, like, we probably need to win in laning phase. And you get more counter picks hypothetically, with that red side selection. So if they want to do this early cast and then pick, they could potentially go for that again. If Fnatic adapts and bans out the cast, then now you can wait for later in the draft before taking your solo lanes and hopefully finding some areas to pressure. For me, I'm just after more engage on the side. Of HK. I think they, like, the, as you rightly said, they had a lot of tools in their kits, but just simplify it, make the things easier. Maybe just group up five and force a fight. Like, these guys are strong individual players. They just need easier ways to sort of make stuff happen. And I think champions like Jarvan, Maokai, Sejuani, Gragas, all these are great picks that can better facilitate the action go button. All right, well, Fnatic are going to start the series one and zero. We're going to see if Hong Kong Attitude can pick up a win of their own in game two of the match. Meet us back here after the break. So we do stuff.